I am Ella, 28 years old. My favorite things are white rice, rice balls, and just rice. Yes, I am a slightly chubby new mother who loves rice with all her heart. I've loved white rice since I was a child, and my mother used to be amazed when I told her that I ate rice from morning to night. My love for rice knows no boundaries. And I even went on a study at a university in the food industry to develop delicious recipes that will go well with rice. It was there I met my current husband, Daniel. We were in the same class, and I was thrilled when he told me that he was a rice farmer. I was born and raised in the city, and didn't know anyone who was a rice farmer. He came to the city because he didn't like the fact that his family was a farmer in the countryside. He seemed to be inspired by my love of rice, and the fact that I ate it so deliciously every day. After graduation, I followed him back to the countryside to take over the farmhouse, and two years later, we got married. Now I work as a dietitian at a nursing home, and I'm always helping with rice planting and harvesting. The eldest son, who had moved to the city saying he would not take over the family business, came back with a prospective wife, and my in-laws were in a frenzy. Moreover, my husband. If Ella hadn't been smiling so broadly and chomping down on rice balls at that moment, I wouldn't have had any intention of taking over the farm. Would say that, so I am worshipped like a goddess in my in-laws' house. My in-laws are gentle people to begin with, so when they decided to build a house on their property, I had no resistance. I get to eat delicious rice from a rice-producing region every day. My husband and in-laws would not have gone out of business. It was a win-win situation, and we were enjoying our home very much. Our long-awaited first child was born. He was a boy, and we named him Jack. Since there is still a strong sense in our community that the firstborn son has to be the heir of the family, my in-laws, relatives, and neighbors were all overjoyed. Having my beloved husband's child and being blessed by so many people made my days the happiest of my life. My son, who was loved by everyone around me, turned four months old. So I decided to go to the health center for a checkup. I was surrounded by babies the same age as my son, and I was excited to think that one day children would become friends with Jack. As I waited for my turn to see the doctor, chatting happily with the kind-looking mother sitting next to me, I suddenly heard a voice above my head. Where did you buy those luxury brand clothes? What? I looked up towards the voice and saw a woman with long hair looking down at me and my son. I was puzzled by the sudden question without any form of greeting, but she seemed to be the same new mother and answered with a smile. Well, my, my mother-in-law bought it for me, so I don't know. She wiggled her thin eyebrows at my answer. Wow, your mother-in-law dictates what you wear? That must be tough. What? Really? I did hear about a friend of mine who was having trouble with her mother-in-law buying clothes for her, but I was grateful because I'm not that particular and my mother-in-law has good taste. I didn't even know these clothes were a luxury brand in the first place. I felt uncomfortable as she stared at me with her eyes as if she was trying to decide what to wear. I was wondering whether I should leave my seat by pretending to change a diaper when she said to me, I'll take those clothes off your hand. What? I was so confused I didn't know what she meant, but she started to take off my son's clothes. Hey, hey, what are you doing? She was blatantly miffed when I hurriedly picked up my son in my arms. You don't want the clothes your mother-in-law bought for you, so I'm going to take them. Huh? No, no thanks. In the first place, if I give you the clothes he's wearing now, what is my son supposed to wear home? Why don't you just wrap a towel around him and go home? Don't worry, it's not that cold today. No way am I doing that. She was saying something crazy as if it was a matter of course, and my head was in a turmoil. Still, I tried my best to protect my son from getting hurt. Maria, what's wrong? A public health nurse, hearing the commotion, came between us with calm movements. If there's anything bothering you, I'm here to listen. Please, come this way. 
The nurse gently but firmly led her to another room. Maria, as she was called, clicked her tongue and was taken away by the nurse. Are you okay? Y yes. The woman next to me, whom I had been having a friendly conversation with earlier, looked at me with concern. Apparently, she had brought that nurse to the scene. And I thanked the woman. I wiped away a cold sweat, thinking about the crazy people in this world. The next day, when I thought such an unpleasant thing would never happen, Huh? What's wrong, Ella? As I was about to take in the laundry, I had it hung out to dry in the evening. I'd noticed something odd. One of Jack's clothes was missing. The clothes of my son who had come for his checkup yesterday, I couldn't find that one of his clothing items, let alone the hanger. Oh no, maybe the wind blew it away. I'm sorry, but you bought it for my son too. My mother-in-law soothed me with a smile and I was feeling down. It's okay. I have another chance to buy clothes for my grandson. Just kidding. I couldn't help but smile at my mother-in-law's playful and kind attitude, even though I'd been feeling down. I know. Let's go shopping tomorrow. Let me know what you like. Okay. Thanks to my mother-in-law's concern, the case of my son's missing clothes was supposed to be resolved peacefully. However, five days later, my son's clothes went missing again. As it was a slightly expensive item my mother-in-law had recently bought for him, even my mother-in-law was suspicious looking around the yard. Still, we couldn't make a big deal out of the loss of two pieces of clothing, so we did nothing about it. Three days later, after lunch, while dealing with a delivery service, we suddenly looked around the entrance and realized what had happened. The day before, we had been caught in a rainstorm while taking a walk and we could not find our stroller, which was supposed to be drying out on the porch. Miss Julia, do you know what happened to the stroller? What? No, no, I don't. That's weird. The stroller was also a gift from my mother-in-law. Moreover, it was a sturdy and stable foreign brand so that my son could go out with the peace of mind. I felt my heart race and that's when I decided. I was convinced that both the baby clothes and the stroller had been stolen. Whoever it was had stolen my precious son's things. I was boiling with anger. I'm reporting this to the police. I was taking out my phone, my mother-in-law stopped me. Calling the police over missing stroller is crazy. But the stroller and the clothes are precious things that you bought for my son. I knew what she did. My mother-in-law used the computer, which she's not good at using, to gather information on buying baby items. I know that she was truly happy about the birth of my son, and that she took good care of my body and gave me good things. I will never forgive anyone who tramples on my mother-in-law's goodwill. Ella! My mother-in-law stared at me and sighed, troubled and happy. All right, but don't contact the police. But, but, as if to calm me down, she says, a missing stroller won't get the police to make a move. I'll find the corporate more efficiently. You go take a nap with Jack. After saying this, my mother-in-law picked up her address book and began making phone calls. Listening to the leaked conversation, I couldn't help but be impressed by my mother-in-law's acting ability and skillful speech. Surely, in the countryside, we might not be able to find the culprit this way. As I predicted, the culprit was easily found three days later. My mother-in-law thought it was someone who lived nearby, judging by the manner of theft. So my mother-in-law's only action was to make tearful phone calls to the wives in the neighborhood to complain about the damage that was caused. With that, the wives all worked together to gather information. The neighborhood's high opinion of me as a wife who came to the city and did not mind taking care of the rice patties led me to a powerful response. Well, maybe they're just amused onlookers, but my mother-in-law made a lot of phone calls. By the end of the day, the information had spread throughout the entire neighborhood association, and one of the wives gave me a valuable eyewitness report that she had seen a similar stroller in a neighboring town. Based on this information, we questioned the farmer's wife, who lived in the next town, and she admitted to the crime. 
the network in the countryside is quite frightening. I was then surprised by a woman who visited our house with a baby stroller accompanied by her husband. She was the woman who had tried to rip off my son's clothes at his four month checkup. Apparently, she had followed me home after the checkup while pushing the stroller. I was shocked by the abnormality of being obsessed with someone you have only spoken to once and horrified at the fact that such a person knew about our house. Her husband was trying his best to apologize, but she was looking as if she were flustered. Did you steal the clothes too? Uh, hey, you even stole clothes? Her husband is pale, but she doesn't even change her expression. What? I only took it because she looked like she didn't want it, she said. Of course I want them. The clothes and the stroller are precious things given to me by my mother-in-law. I don't like that kind of attitude. Huh? She stared at me with hatred in her dead eyes until a moment ago. You're so obsessed with your mother-in-law. You live with her in the countryside because you're poor, aren't you? Don't you have any pride? Huh? My mother-in-law put her hand on my shoulder. I was about to start a fight with her because of her rude attitude. Please, take that stroller home. I will buy a new one for my grandson. I will forward you the bill, she says. What? I brought it all the way here. What are you talking about? Ignoring her rant, my mother-in-law spoke to Maria's husband. Sir, your wife seems to have very sticky fingers. This isn't the first time she's stolen something, is it? What? The blood quickly drained from her husband's face. I heard all about it. I heard you guys were living in this city, but you suddenly moved here as if you were running away. My mother-in-law pointed out a definite fact. Oh no. Her face also turned bloodthirsty. You thought that in the countryside, people would forgive you for a little indiscretion, didn't you? But you know the countryside is scary. Prepare yourself. The two of them were blandly flabbergasted by my mother-in-law who approached them quietly and unobservably, but without averting her eyes and ran off as if to get away. Miss Julia, how much do you know about the couple? I asked my mother-in-law. She said she quit her part-time job before coming in here because of her pregnancy, but was fired for skimming money from the co-workers in the cash register. She said something she did similar at her husband's company's house and moved away to escape. I heard that her pregnancy was real and she didn't turn herself into the police of the warmth of the people around her. I wonder what will happen to her in the future since she caused such a commotion in such rural areas. I see. It is really scary in the countryside where you get so much information in just three days. My mother-in-law laughed bitterly and I returned a small smile. I swore from the bottom of my heart I would never do anything bad. As my mother-in-law had read, she had been misbehaving in many places. People who found out that we had been looted again to come forward and say that they have also been victims of stealing. Each one may be trivial, but the fact remains that she did a lot of evil deeds. Maria's mother-in-law and husband went around apologizing, bowing their heads to everyone. However, she stayed at home and showed no remorse for her wrongdoings. Because of that attitude, the people around her were looking away from her, as if the house was built by an unbelievable wife. It seems that her mother-in-law paid for almost half the cost of what she had done in that town, and when she came to the countryside, she had become a better person. They are disgusted that she came to the countryside and repeatedly did her misdeeds without any apology. I guess Maria's mother-in-law could not stand being ostracized by her neighbors. If you don't divorce your wife, I will give all the inheritance of the house to your brother. She gave Maria's husband, her eldest son, an ultimatum. The husband, who had completely been fed up with his wife, was encouraged by the ultimatum and immediately decided to divorce her. Of course, Maria did not agree with it. One day, about a month after the stroller fiasco, 
She stormed into her house with an angry face and made steam come out of her head. Hey, I'm getting a divorce because of you. My son has been taken away from me by my husband and his mother, and you're taking the blame. As I happened to be home alone, I was against her sniving and blaming me, and calmly replied to her words. You deserved it. Grapes, chicken eggs, watermelons. The damage of various farmers was all you're doing. It's better for a child to grow up without a problematic mother like you. What is wrong with you? There are so many crops out there, it wouldn't be a problem if I took a little bit of it. I thought the country people were more open-minded. What happened to the spirit of mutual help? This woman is crazy. Have you ever done anything to help others or anything else that would make people grateful? Ugh. In the first place, in the first place, how can you be allowed to steal the crops that have been carefully nurtured like your own child? The same goes for your baby products. They were bought with money that my mother-in-law obtained through the hard work. What? You're acting like a good girl. It's disgusting. I don't care if you find me disgusting. Just smile and be serious and you'll get a full meal of delicious rice. It's great. Wow. You're finally showing your true colors. Just when she smiled that snickering smile. That's fine, a voice behind her said. What? Before I knew it, my mother-in-law, who had returned from working in the fields, came up next to me and laughed at her. It's a blessing to be a rice farmer, and I have a woman who fell in love with a rice and came to marry my son. It's great to have a wife who smiles and helps out in the rice patties, and happily eats her rice, but, but, it's much, much better than a wife like you who only knows how to steal. Ugh. Now why don't you go back to the city you love so much? Or should I call the police? What? I guess she was so shocked that the bond between me and my mother-in-law was so strong and it, it completely overturned her outlook on life. She ran away screaming like a child. Oh. I hope she doesn't ever come back here again. I remember my line earlier about being able to eat a full meal of delicious rice while praying that she would never go back. Oh, no, no, of course. I wasn't just attracted by the rice, you know. I married my husband because I love him too, you know. After the rice, right? <laughs> I look at my understanding, kind mother-in-law and laugh. The watered rice fields were sparkling in the spring sunlight. My mother-in-law was furious at Maria's unrepented behavior when she stormed into her house after that. She demanded an immediate lump sum refund of the damage payment she had taken on her shoulders. Naturally, Mia was unable to repay the money, and her flamboyant and confident appearance from the line we first met was just a shadow of her former self. She left the town with shaggy hair and tattered clothes. She would probably end up living a life of debauchery, working in some bar somewhere in the middle of nowhere. Five months have passed since then, and it is time to take our son who gradually switched from baby food to regular food. Mmm, mmm. The rice that daddy made is delicious, isn't it? Mama. Yes, nothing beats fresh rice. Dada. My husband, who was eating next to me, laughed as I chatted with my son while feeding him porridge. Jack is going to grow up to be a rice lover, isn't he? Of course. He's a happy child who always loved delicious rice by his side. Both my mother-in-law and father-in-law look at us with smiles. Surrounded by my favorite rice and a kind family, I am full of happiness.